Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the Take Our Kids to Work Day virtual summit. My name is Naomi Ng, the Community Manager of Early Talent, and I lead the High School Initiatives in Technology at RBC. Um, I also want to do a huge welcome to the Omni team. So welcome Eric Sarpong, Tech Lead and Senior Software Developer, Alexander Mann, Senior Developer, Carmen Wong, Senior Product Manager, Alexander Curtis, Developer, Anthony Lopez, Developer, and one of our fall co-ops this term. All right, to jump into it, what is RBC? Well, RBC, or the Royal Bank of Canada, is a leading diversified provider of financial services with the purpose of helping clients thrive and communities prosper. We are the number one bank in Canada, serving over 16 million clients. We're also the 11th largest bank worldwide with locations in um, the US, England, Caribbean, and even Malaysia. We're recognized time and time again for our financial strength market leadership, and charitable work. We also have over 86,000 employees that work with us in different areas of the bank, like insurance, capital markets, wealth management, human resources, and more. But we believe that the beating heart of RBC is technology. To talk, technology helps maintain our business, but also helps us venture into new innovative spaces. We have teams that are solely focused on technology here at RBC. For example, cybersecurity that helps us protect our client data and stop hackers, as well as teams like Borealis and DNA that use data science and AI to provide better insights to help grow our business. Now let me pass it off to Omni, another team in technology to talk a bit about their innovative work and how they're helping RBC become a digitally enabled bank of the future. So I'll pass it off to you, Omni. Um, here you go. Thank you, Naomi, for that introduction. Uh, so Omni, the department within the bank, whose main goal is to allow people to seamlessly bank from outside of physical bank location, for example, mobile banking on your phone or online banking. Within Omni, the developers are mainly split between two main categories, front-end and back-end developers. The front-end developers create whatever you see and interact with, while the back-end developers manages all the data that the front-end requires. So to give you all a quick example of this, when you log into your email and you see all of your emails, the back end is what is providing all of your emails to you, and the front end formats the data into what you see. So Omni follows Azal's best practices in their ways of working. Think of it as a way to increase your agility. You want to speed up the production. Azal's best practices can be applied to more than just Omni's way of working. It can be applied to work to school projects and other team environments, and in some cases. You can, it can even help keep oneself organized. So let me relate uh, Agile to the structure of our high school experience. Within each of your classes, you have a bunch of units that you guys get tested on. For us, each unit is called an EPIC. Now, within each of your units, there are probably projects and homework that you have to complete. We call these projects sprints. Every two weeks, we complete a sprint. Now, each sprint, there are a series of tasks that need to be completed to successfully complete the project. We call these stories. So our day-to-day -day job entails completing numerous stories that relate to a given sprint. When all of the stories are complete, the sprint is complete. The last few things on the slide that I haven't touched on yet are one, stand up, which is a daily meeting similar to how you guys have announcements every morning, except it's a two-way conversation where we provide updates on what we've been working on. Second is the Scrum Master which is the developer on the team, which ensures we are following all of these agile practices that you see on the screen. You could think of them as a teacher that enforces the rules. Lastly, we have retro, which occurs after each sprint. It is a time for us to reflect on our work and determine what we can improve on to increase the overall efficiency and productivity of our team. You can think of this as a group discussion on a rubric. So, to continue on the comparison on our ways of working and your high school experience, Omni is separated into multiple journeys that are focused on a specific future. You can think of each future as a single class. While each of you are in your required classes, you can join clubs that allow you to explore your own interests. Interest. This is what we call chapters. Within each journey, we have numerous squads, which essentially is a group of people that are working on an epic, similar to how each class can have many different group projects. So for any given developer, you are contributing to these three separate parts of Omni.
My apologies, I was muted. <laughs> Each Agile team is, is comprised with a diverse group of, uh, of roles. We, we have three set main sections of roles, business, design, and development. Uh, and within business, we have two roles shown on the screen here, product owner and business analyst. The product owner is, is actually uh, in, in charge of the actual delivery and, and uh, to ensure we have all the, uh, all the dots or the T's crossed and, and the, the I's dotted. And they create stories, which then pass on to the designers. The designers create these artwork mock-ups or create an image of how the screen should look, which are then passed off to the developers. And the developers are led by one tech lead uh, who makes sure that we all create, uh, you know, the code that, that uh, brings these pieces of artwork and these business stories to life. And together, we work together, uh, passing back and forth our information to make sure that we deliver the product. So RBC has one of the biggest co-op programs in Canada, and there's a reason for that. A lot of people look at co-ops as students who do not get to work on meaningful projects or tasks. However, here at RBC, co-op students are treated like just any other developer on the team. They get to choose whether they want to work on the front or the back end, and as a result, there's a lot of opportunity to learn and gain experience. Also, as a co-op student, there's a lot of opportunity to network meet new people in different parts of RBC and uh, meet a lot of new co-op students uh, similar to yourself and develop meaningful relationships that will last a long time. All right, so now we're going to open up the floor for some questions. I see there's some great questions coming in already, but the first one I have here is how long does it take to create an app? That's a very good question. So there's there's not a concrete answer for this. It depends on a few factors. One of it is the size of the app, and two is the amount of developers, resources that we have available. So for example, if we are developing a smaller app, the, the, the phases will go to production. By production, I mean live way much faster compared to a bigger app. But they all go to the same phases, which is the implementation phase, the testing, Algorithm to production. So what happens is each developer takes their stories by stories, which is each pieces. They implement it, they push it to the code, and then once all of the stories are completed, we put it together into one piece. We go to the testing phase where our PO and other testers will test the, the full functionality of the product. And once we get a green light, then we ship that product to, to production. So if it's a bigger app, it takes longer. If it's a smaller app, it's usually faster and that's usually how it goes. Awesome. All right. Well, I see another question here. Do all developers code the same way or do developers have different techniques of creating code? I can take this question. Uh, everybody does have a unique way of coding, but we do try to align on certain standards because we are working on the same uh, piece so that we have to understand each other and we have to be able to pass our work on to somebody else and they should know what our intent was and what we were trying to do. So there is a bit of creativity involved, but um, there are some standards and some sort of codes of cleanliness to, to make sure that we instill. Awesome. All right, so I'll take one more question here. So I see what classes or university programs should a student look into if they want to be in technology? Cool, I can take that one. So the main university programs that are direct route to a job in technology as a software developer would be computer science or software engineering. Uh, the high school courses that you would take to go into these two programs would be math for sure, basically all the maps. Uh, and if the school offers them, computer science and computer engineering high school classes are very beneficial, not required. Uh, but the great thing about technology is you can always teach yourself. Uh, look up for hackathons you can join and get the ball rolling on your own. Most developers got started initially by teaching themselves. Awesome. All right, well, thanks for those amazing questions and thank you, Omni. Hopefully that gave you some insights on how we leverage new technology here at RBC. But now let's talk a little bit about the future. So we believe the future of our business starts with you. 
bright-minded and eager students interested in growing your skills and learning new things. And that's why my team has created different opportunities to build skills of the future. We run immersive programs for all youth, such as the TNO student program for post-secondary students, NGI, which is our all girls elementary and high school hackathon, and Amplify, an innovation program for upper year post-secondary students. For high school, our signature program is RBC Summer Tech Labs, an eight week paid internship for high school students in grade 11 and 12 who are interested in technology and code development. Throughout the summer, the students collaborate in small teams to solve real RBC challenges, get to expand their technical skill sets, and most importantly, experience what it's like to work in technology at RBC. So if you want to learn more about the Summer Tech Labs program or early talent in general, head to our jobs page at jobs.rbc.com slash tech. Uh, so as you can see, the world of technology continues to evolve. So RBC is trying to jump ahead of the curve by creating innovative solutions, working agile and supporting our youth. Um, so with that said, I will open up the floor for some more questions. All right, so I see a question that just came in. What inspires you to be uh, in the career field you are in today? Um, so if anyone wants to answer why they're in their career field today. I can answer that. So when I was young, when I was in, um, I'll say high school, I was always interested in, in computers, but I didn't really know what um, programming or development was, but I was into Photoshop, but I knew that I wanted to be a computer. I knew that I wanted to be like in the engineer robotics field. So in college, I went to Humber College and I did computer engineering. And that's when I was introduced to computer programming. And at first I started with a low programming level, a low programming language called C, which is a bit kind of difficult. But it was when I was introduced to Java where I created my first GUI, which was just a button that shows you hello. Then I was like, I was blown away. Was like, wow, I have all this power in my hand to create anything. So from there on, it became, I just became in love with programming development and I went to university after and I knew that I knew that this was the career that I wanted to be in. Awesome. OK, so I'm just uh, conscious of time. I'm going to ask one more question. What is the future of technology with relation to networking programs, cybersecurity or AI? So where do you see technology going in the future? I can take this question as well. Um, I mean, with with sort of the Internet of Things and, and everything being connected, I, I think that's where it's going. It's it's just about a, a self-serve and, and that's what RBC is is geared toward as well. It's about you being able to do what you want uh, on your own time and your own device and, and, and when you want to do it. So, uh, you know, everything is becoming more accessible. And I think that's the, the great thing about technology. It's, it's connecting us together and it's um, enabling us to to do what we want on our own time. No more uh, no more need to stand on a on a call waiting waiting in line for somebody to answer. Totally. So I was totally wrong. We have five more minutes, so I'm going to ask another question. Um, so one question here is, well, what does your work mean to you? It's a pretty difficult one, so. <laughs> um, I can take that unless if anybody wants to take it. I, I, I can take it. So I think like you can you can approach this question from a couple of different ways. Um, one is um, work at RBC. So for for me, working at RBC is um, it's a time where you get to collaborate and kind of learn more. So whenever whenever I work on something, I'm always trying to learn more and improve my own assets, um, like my own skills. Um, that way I can um, grow as a person. And then the other aspect of that question is what my own work means to me. So whenever I do do uh, my own work, it's um, I, I try and do it in a way that I can look back on it and I can be proud of it in a sense. It's like, OK, I left that work behind. And when other people see that work, um, you know, it's a representation of who I am as a person and uh, and my skill set. Awesome. All right. So another question here. Any advice for aspiring product managers, developers or software engineers? Because I can take that question as well. Um, like we said earlier, I mean, getting involved with with coding languages early is, is very very helpful i mean there's so much uh so many resources online uh so many youtube videos and tutorials um online schools like uh udemy and, and there's a couple other ones where you can just dive right into it i mean it's very easy to create a website uh or even a small little application 
um, even even uh, a mobile app, or if you want to, games as well. I mean, Unity is is a is a tool that a lot of uh, video game developers use, and it's open source. It's free. You can download it on your computer, and uh, you can just get going. I think that's the most important thing: is is get your feet wet, as they say. You know, start start building things, start learning about what it is to be a developer, and and see if it's if it's for you. Mm -hmm, totally. And just one thing to add on to that, I think uh, the main thing we always say in Agile is fail early and fail fast. Um, so this is a time to explore and try new things. So definitely put yourself out there. Um, don't worry if you know you're going to do it wrong. No one's judging you. Um, it's just a great time to experiment with new things. OK, so the next question I have here is what is the hardest part of your job? I can take that. So <laughs> this is a bit like I, this question. Well, the answer to this is it depends on each developer as such, but I could say it's something we can all agree on is the hardest part is usually when we have the code running in our development environment and then it goes to the next environment and for some reason there's some weird behavior. So we have to take it back and try to reproduce that behavior or issue or bug inside our local environment. So it gets a bit tricky, but as a developer, we all love to prop we all love problem solving. So although it's the hard part, it's still fun because it's like you're trying to like do so many logical thinking in your head and see where, where the problem can go wrong. And then once you find that problem, it's like you're in you just feel great until another problem comes, but then you're good. <laughs> totally. Um, OK, so I see one question here. So what are the high school labs like? Um, because I actually run the high school labs, I'm biased. I love the program. I think it's great. Um, so this past summer we had 30 innovation developers um, and they got to work on two RBC products. Um, so honestly, it's kind of like a summer camp, <laughs> I would say, but also a great learning opportunity. If you do want to learn more, we actually have a YouTube video out. So just search up RBC Summer Tech Labs and it helps uh, capture what RBC Summer Tech Labs is like, but definitely a great experience. And don't worry if you don't feel strong technically. Again, this is a learning opportunity, so um, you're going to really expand your skills and understand what it's like to work in a corporate environment. Um, so I think that was actually the last question uh, we had. So sorry, I kind of took the thunder there, but I just wanted to say thank you to all of you from across Canada who participated in today's event. We really enjoyed the session and being able to answer your amazing and challenging questions. Um, the recording of the session will be available later today on the Learning Partnership YouTube page and all registered attendees will receive a link to the recording via email tomorrow morning with the survey. Uh, so thanks again and have a great Taker Kids Work Day. <laughs>